Uh, next up, we have Blake Ramsdale giving a talk called Programmic Generation of Symbols and Footprints. Blake has been working with electronics since 2010, including five years at Microsoft Surface products, as well as firmware engineer and software development engineer and test. His technology background started in software, and he's been improving his hardware skills, most recently through courses in electronics technology at the Lake Washington Institute of Technology. Please welcome Blake to the stage. Excellent, thank you. Perfect. All right. Okay. Excellent. Like that. Uh, so I was uh, I was hoping we would get this KiCad KiCad thing out of the way early, but uh, so I'm going to call it KiCad, and that's the way I'm going to roll. So, which is the correct way. Th thank you very much. I heard some applause out there, to the point where I'm going to rename DigiKey to be DigiKai. That's how committed I am to this, okay? So this is more of a story of, uh, uh, of my frustration. It's funny because when I, originally, uh, when I originally was going to submit a talk for this, I actually looked at Skittle and said like that. It's like, oh, you know what? I think I'd like to, I'd like to do a talk about this. Now, they'll probably have somebody better to talk about Skittle like, uh, uh, when, uh, when I get there. And it's like, yeah, so Dave uh, is probably a good guy to talk about Skittle, so it worked out good. So. This kind of, it's funny because this kind of goes, uh, you know, hand in hand with Skittle, actually, in a bit, like that, that I think that uh, the next time that there's a talk, uh, I may actually have more of a conversation about, now here's how you integrate that with Skittle. And I think that, um, you know, that Dave and I have a lot of the same ideas as far as um, when you have things, you know, in code, uh, sometimes it's a lot easier to kind of like work with it as code than it is to work with it as a drawing. And, the, uh, and that drawing and the aesthetics that come along with the drawing, like the, 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 that's a, uh, an interesting thing sometimes for communication, but from the standpoint of actually trying to get the work done of uh, I'm building a product, like uh, that, uh, that, that sometimes gets in the way and you spend a lot of time, like he said, futzing with like, uh, you know, your dot sizes, you know, your junction sizes and the background color of things and, uh, and things like that. And I came at that from kind of a slightly different angle, which was that presuming that you still have to use some of these tools, what's the best way that you can actually start kind of taking parts uh, and get them back into the tools so that you can then do the things that make them pretty, but you didn't have to do the, the drudgery of like, a, you know, laying out, um, a, laying out the symbol and the footprint and things like that. So, so the point is, is that, um, so my whole thing was that I, I don't like dragging and dropping things that need to be precise. And uh, as much as we have grids and things inside of, uh, you know, in, inside of uh, KiCad and that they actually do a pretty good job of giving you kind of metrics tools and things like that, you're still dragging and dropping and then verifying that this number is greater than this number and this number is, when subtracted from that number, is this far away. And then, oh shit, that's in millimeters and it needs to be in mils and like that, and this is in mils and, and needs to be in millimeters. And so there's a whole bunch of things like, you know, being precise, and I don't like doing math. Like, uh, you know, I don't like sitting there all the time thinking like, okay, so this one has to be, go to that one, figure out what the Y position is, add another .1 to that, okay, good. Like the, uh, and making sure that you've got everything straight, you know, from the standpoint of uh, positioning. Uh, and to Dave's point, I like programming, and I'd rather spend two times the time programming uh, rather than uh, spend a lot of time dragging and dropping. So, um, so from my standpoint, uh, you know, that the, the programming aspect of it makes sense. And then Dave brought up some great points that, um, you know, about like, well, now you have version control. Now you have things that come along with programming as well as, you know, this, uh, the clarity of whatever programming gives you uh, versus the clarity of, uh, of a visual layout. So uh, as Dave pointed out, like, the, the, that there are, uh, you know, there's tools that he found that uh, were interesting uh, that helped him with, laying out his stuff. And so uh, in my case, I found, this, uh, uh, I found this library called Pint. Pint is, uh, uh, Pint is pretty smart about units and conversion. So it understands things like millimeters and inches and, uh, and then can do conversions on that. So you could say, hey, I have this value. I don't know what it is. Why don't you make that in inches for me and it'll just do the right thing. And then it also knows a little bit about tolerance. Uh, and I say a little bit about tolerance just because uh, 
uh, that there's that I think it could do like plus or minus a particular amount, but it can't do like plus this amount and minus this amount, which is sometimes just something you'll run into. So I'm doing the math as to whether or not uh, uh, whether or not that that could be uh, can be fixed easily. But the idea is that you've got the error. You could say you know plus minus. Can you see that all right? Yeah. You can see the plus minus. Um, you know that they're using centimeters, and they say it's oh plus or minus two centimeters. Um, so anyway, so. Um, Anyway, so the problem that I had to solve was that I had, um, I had this part that I was working with, and this part was described to me, this is our schematic for the part, and uh, to Dave's point, like uh, this uh, uh, is sometimes not as readable as you might like, but basically I had this whole kind of layout that I had to do where there are different buses that are going to different pins, uh, you know, on this thing, and like that some of them are pulled up, and, uh, you know, and, and there's a seven-segment display in here. But the big thing was that I had this fat CPLD that I had to work with, and it, he, his nightmare is worse than mine. Uh, this is only 44 pins. I think he talked about one that was hundreds of pins. And, um, uh, and so we're using this PLCC part and then, uh, and then using it with a, uh, with a converter, um, and the ASMAN components. Uh, and so there's a 44-pin PLCC, and that goes out to a pin grid. And so fine, so this pin grid like had a specification, right? Like that there's a, you know, 2.54 millimeter on center pin spacing, uh, 0.8 millimeter, you know, nominal pin diameter. Like, uh, and it's like, all right, like that I think I got some of this. But the thing was is that it has kind of a pattern to it, right? Like that you have to lay this out, and it's not, it's not like I could just kind of go one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. That's like, no, I have to go one. And then, and then there was kind of a drudgery to that. And I imagine I could probably muscle through it after some amount of time. Like I could have, uh, I could have eventually ended up with uh, a footprint that I did by hand. But what I started thinking about was that it's like, all right, well, is there some way that, uh, is there some way that, uh, that I can automate this a little bit? That's the, uh, uh, that's the part. And then like, um, and then, so how could we how could we generate this uh, programmatically as opposed to like having to just do it do it by hand? And so I started kind of like looking at it and says like, well, look, it looks like there's like six pins across the top, and then like that one on the, on the ends there, and one on the ends there. So it's like an eight by eight grid, and then this is missing out of the middle here. So I could just like I could build like a big array, and then just put in like six, four, two, forty four, forty two, forty. And even that doesn't sound that bad, right? Like that, that's still going pretty quick from the standpoint of, um, from the standpoint of, uh, you know, laying it out just for doing it one time. But then I said, it's like, well, why don't I figure out like uh, how this works, right? Like that there's a pattern to the way that uh, that this is laid out, and actually that pattern would apply to these other size footprints also because they've got, um, they go up to like a, you know an 84 position uh, part. I'm using the 44 one, like a, but the thing is that my grid approach, that eight by eight grid I was talking about, it's like that doesn't line up with any of the other footprints that, uh, that we'd still have to solve that problem if you wanted to have uh, other footprint sizes. So what's the, um, what's the way to do that? And so I started thinking about the grid and I said, no, and so it's like, well, let's see if we can figure out the stitching that they're, that they're doing here. And so in that case, that's a little small. Let's see what we can do there. Hang on a sec. There we go. All right, that's a little better. So, um, so what I was able to do is I was able to kind of come up with um, basically using Python. Like uh, I, uh, I made a generator uh, that in Python they have a concept of a generator where you can say, you know, give me the next one of this thing, it'll pop out another one. So I said like that, uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to generate all the pins uh, for this footprint. And so, um, so what I did was I built this. Uh, uh, I, first of all, I defined a pitch, and I said that uh, that using pint um, and the unit registry out of pint, I could say that like that. Oh, the pitch of this uh, of this part is 2.54 millimeters, uh, and uh, and that's pretty easy to do with pint. And then, then I came up with this concept of okay, so you got these pin maps. I did the the 20 pin layout and the uh, and the 44 pin layout. Um, that was just kind of proof of concept. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, the 20 pin was the smallest one, and the uh, uh, and the 44 pin was the one I was using. I just wanted to make sure it would work for two. And um, but the idea is that I came up with this concept of like, oh, you've got these jump points, 
and the jump points are basically the, the point at which it moves to another side. And so on pin 6, on pin 17, on pin 28, uh, 6, 17, 28, like that, that, I said these are the points where you need to transition to another side. And then I came up with this idea of, oops, I came up with this idea of you've got um, basically when you're on one side, like that, 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 you've got the inside and the outside. And so you do a move that goes from the inside, like in this case, pin one's on the inside. The inside to outside move, you're going to move up and to the left, and, like I, and the outside to inside move on this side is just moving down. And so the idea is that this encoding here is basically just saying it's like, oh, when you're on the top side, when you're on the inside, you're going to move up and to the left, and, like the, and when you're on the outside, you're just going to move down one. And then that rotates on each of the four sides. And so then it's just a matter of kind of at each of the jump points moving to the next side uh, in, order to, uh, in order to do this. So you do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it jumps over to seven. But that move from six to seven is the same move that you go from eight to nine. So it's basically the, uh, the inside to outside move for that side. To me, this makes sense, okay? Like that, that, that the idea is that I have to maintain this and, the, uh, I, and, uh, and I want to generate this. So um, to me, this makes sense uh, to do it this way and have it laid out. And then now I can do things like when we come down, we say like that, uh, that uh, the, the output of this is basically uh, the, uh, the pin number uh, and then the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. That's pretty much all that's going to be output from this. And then, then what happens is that the rest of it is all just kind of like figuring out what to do next based on whether or not like we're on a corner and we'd have to do a jump or uh, whether we're on the inside and we're moving to the outside uh, or the outside moving to the inside. And then it's just adjusting the, the current position you know, for each of the pins. And then at the end of this, like, it's like, it just says like, oh yeah, we're gonna generate all these pins. And then the way I do the output for that, um, that because in KiCad, like the, uh, in KiCad, uh, it's a fairly simple format. I mean, it's not like I needed like a documentation, I, I need like a document for this, that, uh, that if you look at, uh, if you look at the file um, that's generated by KiCad, you see like that it's like, oh yeah, it says like it's a pad, like uh, it's numbers one, like uh, it's a through hole pad. And so it's pretty easy to just kind of, uh, uh, to just generate that. Like, uh, so I just did like that, uh, I just did with a print statement, like I, uh, and just print it out for each of the, for each of the pins. I'd had a fixed drill size and I had a fixed, uh, you know, I had a fixed size for the pad. But the idea is that, uh, you know, I just, Took the programmatically generated positions and numbers, and then uh, and then just output that as uh, uh, as the output of the script. So, so anyway, so um, so that that got me there, and then um, and then the other problem that I had is that I wanted to work on the uh, on the symbol side of it, and so with the symbol, um, there's basically uh, you know all 44 of those. Whoops. All 44 of those um, symbols going around the edge there, and trying to figure out like I, here, let's, uh, and basically laying out their names, uh, you know, along with their pin number uh, and their pin function. And the um, and so the idea is that uh, I wanted a symbol in uh, E schema so that I could uh, you know so that I could start hooking things up to this and. Uh, I took a pretty simple approach, which is basically it's like, okay, well, I got 44 pins. I'm just gonna do 22 down, 22 up, like the uh, uh, up and down both sides, and so that one was actually a somewhat easier problem, just because there's no pin numbers here. The pin numbers implicit based on its uh, that I, I built like a giant tuple that has like the name of the pin and uh, and the function of the pin and the function of the pin uh, that that's also kind of fairly standard in KiCad, like uh, um, that you've got this last letter B, like that uh, is, the, is the type, and then depending on the, what that letter is. So the idea is that uh, I just took all these guys and then ran down the whole thing and then um, output their position uh, and, their, uh, and their function. Um, and then that gave, me, uh, that gave me what I needed for, uh, you know, for what I needed for the symbol data. So then uh, when I got done with that, I ended up with, with that. So 
it came out pretty good. You know, I mean, I think that from my standpoint, like that, like, like I said, I don't like, uh, I, I don't like dragging and dropping stuff a lot. Like that, that, you know, I don't like working on the graphical tools. Um, and, but the thing is that for this, uh, you know, uh, for the class that I was in, uh, they wanted us to, you know, they wanted us to have a schematic at the end of it and, uh, uh, and this kind of thing. So, uh, otherwise I actually probably would, look, would have looked a lot harder at, uh, uh, at Skittle, um, uh, as far as, uh, as far as if I were going to do this for myself, I think I would actually be more inclined to uh, to use Skittle and uh, and uh, and not generate a symbol uh, and um, have the part uh, just kind of defined logically in Python and then hook everything up, uh, you know, via Skittle and then uh, build the net list and then uh, uh, and then do the footprint uh, still uh, in my stuff. So and then I think that like. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, uh, so that's where the stuff is. Like the fact that I've basically got, um, it, you know, I dropped it off. Like, uh, you know, it's um, uh, it's on uh, on my GitHub. Like the fact that there's a, a few files that are the uh, the Python files that I use to generate these uh, footprints and symbols, uh, and then a little bit of kind of like discussion about like um, uh, what uh, you know. I I didn't put anything. In, actually, you're right. I, I didn't put anything in there. Like, uh, but um, the idea is that. Uh, I think that I'm going to try and make this a little more formalized and be able to, um, so that you can uh, actually run it from the command line. And right now, it's just kind of outputting the, um, it's just outputting kind of all the pin definitions. You have to kind of go into Notepad and just cut and paste it <laughs> like in Notepad. So, um, but I think that uh, I think that the idea uh, would be to uh, to make it so that we modify the library files and the and the pretty uh, and the pretty footprints. Um, uh, directly, as opposed to uh, going through this additional step of kind of cutting and pasting, I'm worried about kind of like um, uh, how you, uh, in a library file, you've got these other uh, other symbols that are in there, and so being able to go into the section and modify just that section, uh, and then uh, you know, and then not modifying things unnecessarily, that that worries me a little bit. But uh, but I think I, that's something I can fix. But anyway, but I think that. Um, like I said, like that, you know, Dave's talk was kind of, uh, uh, was exciting for me because, uh, uh, you know, he and I think a lot about this, uh, think about this the same way, um, you know, that having the, um, uh, you know, having the ability to do this with code um, to a coder makes a lot of sense. And uh, I don't know whether or not it's going to make sense, uh, you know, to manufacturers and, uh, uh, and things like that. This is my, um, this is where I ended up on kind of my final footprint. But, um, but anyway, so, um, yeah, I you know I think that this is the this is the path that I took like uh, you know to get through this project that I had to work on. So, uh, and um, uh, I think that the the big thing that was kind of illustrative to me was that like uh, is that KiCad is is pretty uh, you know pretty easy to work with from the standpoint of like yeah if you just want to make the files yourself you don't have to use KiCad to make the files. And so to Dave's point like that that, that was kind of a forum conversation that happened, um, and uh, you know that you can have other tools that uh, uh, that that do the work. So. Anyway, that was uh, that's what I did, like that, uh, and uh, and I talked about it. So, excellent. Andy.